Hello and welcome to this video tutorial series from CMIVFX.com. My name is Jonathan Lampel, and in this series we're going to be taking a look at particle systems inside of Blender. So we'll take a project based approach to this, meaning we're going to start out with a few simple effects and move into more complex animations as we go along. So first in this quick intro, let me just show you where you can find particle systems in Blender and a few of the basic controls that you'll need to know if you want to get started right away. So if we want to go ahead and add a particle system to our cube here, all we need to do is go to the Particles tab right between the Texture and Physics tab in the Properties Editor. And if we click New and play back our animation, you can see exactly what's happening. We have particles being emitted, uh, 1,000 of them to be exact, bet between frames 1 and 200. And they're lasting for 50 frames. So if we go into a side view here, we can see more accurately what's happening. So we can change the number of particles emitted, say I only want 500 particles between frames 1 and 200, and now only 500 will be emitted, and you can change this to as little or as high as you want. Of course, there will be a limit on how much your machine can handle, but particles by themselves don't take up a whole lot of memory, so if you need to add, say, 10,000, it shouldn't really be an issue. It's still running at a good 24 frames a second. So we can also change when the particle systems start and end. So if we only want this to play after frame, say 15, it'll do that. And of course, you can choose when the particle systems will end as well. Now, the lifetime here is pretty important because it shows how long the particles are active. So if we change this to something a lot shorter, say 25, you can see that the particles will not last as long, and they'll die around there. Now we can also randomize this because it looks very not natural to have them all cut off at the same point. So if we increase the randomness, some of them are going to die a little bit earlier, and we'll have this more natural fading out effect. Now we can have particles being emitted from not only the faces, like initially set up, we can also have them being emitted from our vertices or from the volume of the cube itself. Now there are a few more settings here that we'll take a little bit more in-depth look at a little bit later. So skipping through the cache, the last thing I want to show you in this introduction is the velocity. And this is how fast the particles are being emitted from our object. So its default setting is a normal value of 1, and this means that they're being emitted at a speed or a velocity of 1, not speed, sorry, um, straight out of the face. So the normal direction is the direction perpendicular to the direction the face is facing. So if we turn this up, you can see exactly what's going on. Now we can also set this down to zero, and they won't be emitted in any direction. They're just going to fall straight down due to gravity. Now we can also have the particles being emitted in any specific direction. So for instance, the X direction. And just to let you know, this is not a global direction, but rather a local direction. So you can see right now they're one and the same. But if I rotate this around, you can see that it's coming out of the local X direction and not the global X direction. So just keep that in mind. Lastly, you can also have it emit from the tangent of a face. So that'll give you some interesting effects and you can rotate that tangent as you'd like. Um, you can also have it be randomized, so in case it looks a little bit too uniform for you. Say, you know, that looks the, a, bit, a bit uniform. So if we turn the random value up, it now looks more natural, and the velocity and direction are both randomized. So that's all I want to show you for now. In the next video, we're going to be taking a look at how to build up a little bit of a snowstorm. Uh, to add into a wintry scene. And so, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.